nerd dice. Just because you're paranoid doesn't mean that everybody's not out to get you. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 31 in our series at nerddice.com, where we build a Ruby on Rails 7 application to manage tabletop role playing. And uh, we, in our backlog, I added an item to make device paranoid. And um, I guess what we should start, and uh, I'll open up the issue and kind of explain what I'm talking about here. So we've got the issue here for make device paranoid. And if we go to, this is devices GitHub site here, we go to the wiki, the search for paranoid. So um, what we'll wind up doing here is the, in the device setup config dot paranoid equals true. But uh, the, the danger here is, and we'll, uh, this has a link to the, the, the OWASP testing for user enumeration attacks. So the problem with how we've got things set up right now, we don't have anything in production yet, but before we do that, um, if somebody goes in and uh, hits a, uh, one of our user refresh things where you put in your email and you get a, an unlock token or you uh, do a reset password token or anything like that, uh, where it's sending you an email. Right now, we are providing feedback on whether or not that user exists in our database. And if you are a malicious user who has a list of email addresses that you want to use to um, attempt to attack a site, let's say you've got a compromised set of usernames and passwords, uh, we know that users, in spite of how much we tell them not to, will reuse passwords across sites so you wind up compromising uh, those credentials and those accounts, uh, potentially uh, compromising your own site's security in the process. So uh, we're going to protect against that. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is um, I, I still want to kind of go a um, test-driven approach to this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this uh, value to, uh, to true, run our system test cases, and show everywhere that it's broken. Uh, and then we'll go in and, and, uh, and fix them. And then we'll, we'll set the attribute back to false, false, go and make all of our tests fail properly. And then we'll go in and set the attribute to true, hopefully making the tests pass. Um, you can see if you go to the locales file here, uh, you can see confirmed uh, send instructions. You will receive an email with instructions on how to confirm your email address and then send paranoid instructions, which is what we want here. Uh, if your email address exists in our database, you will receive an email with instructions on how to confirm your email address in a few minutes. That's the response that we want that doesn't uh, let on whether or not any particular email ad address uh, exists in our database as a user or not. Um, there is, let me see if, is that the only paranoid language we have? No, there are so device confirmations has paranoia device passwords has paranoia and uh, unlocks has um, paranoid instructions so we will go in now to our device this is our config initializers uh, for Um, for the app here and we're going to change it to config dot paranoid equals true and we will now run our system tests that um, that will fail here I'm gonna pause uh, as we're running this just because the the tests take a bit to run and there's there's no sense you just watching a, te a long test run on a screen here so Command here is Rails test system. So I'm going to hit uh, hit enter here, and then I'll pause. Make sure we get into the the runs. All right, we're, we're started. I'll pause. All right, so we have our test results, and out of our uh, 
39 runs. Uh, we have we do have 12 test failures, which is a bit more than I expected. But it looks like things like uh, you have one more attempt before your account is locked. All that stuff also goes away with uh, the paranoid version of this. Uh, it doesn't tell you uh, whether your account is locked. That seems to be the most common version of this. Um, expected to find text, email not found, but uh, instead have if your email address exists. Um, similar to the reset password test, which is affected um, in a bunch of places. So now um, I'm going to replicate all of those uh, failures going back. So we're going to start with the reset password test. We will reset paranoid to being commented. And now we're going to go in and fix each of these tests. So I'm going to go in, start with the first one. Reset password test 58. Come on, 58. Errors out of too short. That's interesting. It won't even provide you feedback on that. Maybe I'm in the wrong spot here. Oh, because 89 is where the, the failure is occurring here. So happy path, happy path about to hit submit is what we're um, affecting here. And it is uh, right around uh, good email flow here. So this is where we would need to change that. Um, I'm actually going to, um, since we've got good tests, I'm, I'm going to actually just, instead of artificially doing it, test-driven development, I'm just going to fix the, the broken tests after doing this. I'm confident that we've got good test coverage and everything, so I'm going to um, reduce the number of failures um, to make these tests pass. So the new... Text we have oops, that's not if your email address exists. Make sure I've got the right okay. change that. This Let's see how many of our situations that fixes. pause and run the test. All right, so that knocked us from eight failures down to, all right, from 12 failures down to eight. Um, lock and unlock. And then reset password is the, um, so the one, the one we have left is 
for um, line 34 there. So uh, obviously email not found um, provides you feedback about whether or not the um, email address exists in our system or not. And um, so that's not something that we want to um, provide information about. Um, let's, and now that is existing more than once, we will put this as a an instance variable. old section here. Do not repeat yourself. And then back on line 34, we will also make that assertion. I'm just going to run it with this, uh, this one class now. Let's see if we've got everything cleared up for that. So that class is good to go. Let's go back and see where our other failures are. So in this case, the, um, we're not locking and unlocking. The, the only feedback given now is e invalid email or password. So we'll do our lock and unlock test here. Make, after we do this, I'm going to also test it in the browser to make sure that it's a viable um, experience here. And then we'll also have to take a look at our commenting after we're done to make sure that none of that needs to change. This is reset password. This one needs to be changed. And then This no longer this now is just paranoid error. And then when your account is locked, paranoid error. Paranoid error. Let's 
see how far that gets us. So lock and unlock lock test. Um, provides now that um, the paranoid version of that. On email not found. We should have oh. I'm going to add an assertion if we don't have one already about the paranoid instructions there uh, whenever somebody attempts to send the, okay, here it is, resend and unlock instructions. So that is line 176. Sign up. One seventy six. Let's take a look at the screenshot. So we're in the directory here, go to temp, screenshots, and this is the, I was there, if your account exists, you will receive an email with instructions on how to unlock it in a few minutes. So resend no longer exists. It is paranoid unlock assertions.
resend unlock instructions does not exist here. Go back to our image. Let's see the login page. That says didn't receive, didn't receive. change the information about that. So instead of going to the unlocks page now, it will redirect you to the normal login page. So um, you might not even need this method anymore. I rerun the class. So that, that brought in more failures. Let's go back to the, I think the problem is instead that the, it's not going to that page. So let's go back to the test that was failing here. I think we were down to one. And the, cha the change there is that instead of redirecting to the resend unlock instructions page, it's sending you, irrespective of whether you're right or wrong, to the login page. Yeah, so it's line 79 there. So line 79. It is the... Now provides no feed back. So I made it that far, and now this is the login page. Assertions instead of things. Now we should be back to passing, I would expect. All right, we are back to passing. Uh, I'm going to kick off the whole suite now, and while this is running in the background, I'm going to take a look at the uh, the experience for a user with uh, specifically these um, reset password and unlock uh, flows here. So uh, we'll do Rails test system test to run everything, and while that's running, we'll kick on our server. We will go to our
browser for our app here and we will um, first attempt to reset the password we will go Um, which I know is not in my database. It should return to the login page with the paranoid instructions, which is what it does, which is what we want. And now um, we'll do it with an actual, let's take a look at the, um, before we, So it's here, you can see, let me go back here, log in, forgot your password, and we'll do the fake one. Fake.email at example.com. So let's take a look at what we see in our see um, found and it's going back to the sessions controller just what we want we probably at this point want to um, in the unhappy ones uh, note that no emails are occurring since the behavior is the same there uh, so now if we want to do this for a different user. Let's say this one, which I don't remember whether we've registered or not at this point. Nope. So we'll do it for I know testing two exists. And you can see this is the email occurring now with the um, the link to change a password so and it says someone has requested a link to change your password um, etc so that's being sent there uh, not being sent in the other um, contexts so uh, and then looking at unlocking so let's say that We'll run into the console here instead of doing this 10 times. We'll um, set it so that it's about to um, about to lock and then um, after it locks. So we will take a look. Looks like our whole suite is passing, which is good. And then all right, so we've got user testing twenty two at example dot com you dot Eight. Now, ordinarily, we would see the the error here. Invalid. Um, 
invalid. Invalid. So that is what the issue is. So um, we may eventually, it depends on circumstances, want to change uh, the language um, and just note that, um, okay, because it gave, yeah, invalid email or password. Um, I think I'm going to change um, that language maybe. I'll at least throw something in our backlog to um, That is the trade-off there. So we're gaining, um, we're making a big gain in security at the expense of providing feedback about that locking situation for the user. Um, when other things being equal, I typically tend to um, err in the favor of having a better user experience at the expense of the um, uh, the the absolute uh, um, security. So like, for example, if uh, time user timeouts or whatever, like uh, some entities are really, really aggressive about timing out, out a user for security purposes. Um, and I, I honestly, I, I tend toward like give the person a couple hours rather than like a 15 minute timeout, especially on something that's form heavy. Uh, I would much prefer um, user experience. And in reality, you're not gaining a whole bunch in the way of security in that situation. But here, um, the user enumeration attack is a, um, a, a substantial threat that we want to uh, handle here. So uh, we'll now take a look at our diff and see where we might want to um, I'll rerun Rubocop, uh, change comments, and things like that. Uh, align parts of a string. We'll just autocorrect. So no offenses, take a look at our diff. Uh, so we've made paranoid true. Uh, we added the instance variables with those messages. Uh, let's see here, provides no feedback with one attempt left. Um, still able to lock in that um, Case login page, not login pate. We'll fix that comment. Um, and then there was oh, I had a an unneeded require in my tailwind helper one of these yeah i'll just knock that out while i'm at it unnecessary i will rerun this test suite before i commit just to make sure that um my redundant require wasn't um 
mistakenly not redundant. Let's see here. Our count is locked. Let's just look at all these places in. Let's take a look at paranoid error. Just make sure we don't. No feedback. Lock and demonstrate behavior. Behavior doesn't change other than the message. Paranoid error. Okay, and then right around line try to unlock instructions to a bad email. So this is where we want to do Not there, it's here. That's where we want no emails. Let me rerun that particular test, line 79. So that still passed. Uh, let's see the paranoid unlock instructions here. So here, redirect to the page with no feedback. That's where we want the um, assert no emails, which we did. And that is actually only occurring once. Uh, We'll leave it. And then our reset password test. Assert no email. So we already had that there. Um, Here, good email flow. Let's make sure that, that has assertions about emails. It does. All right. I think in terms of our changes, we are in good shape there. I will rerun RuboCop. We're good. And then I'll rerun the full suite one last time. And I'll pause and allow this to occur. All right, everything is green. Git status. 
Oh, we are on Branch Main. Uh, before we um, commit this, we want to get back out. New branch. Now we will get add all, get commit, sign it, pause, and write my commit message. All right, so I've got my commit message here. Close it. Close some of these other no longer relevant tabs as well. Now we'll get push. Actually, I'm not even going to set it upstream. We'll just do yeah. In the event that I don't set it upstream, we'll have something happen where a build fails or something. Being paranoid. Get it? Uh, all right. So now this will kick off our build. I'll pause and let that finish. All right. The build has succeeded. We will open the pull request checks have passed go into the command line here check out main merge the branch hit push Tidy up our branches here. And get push. To delete that branch. Our pull request is merged. Our code here. Our issue can now be closed. It's probably 30. Yep, this all by number 30. And uh, I had the tags. We'll close with comment. All right. And um, even though uh, this is about paranoia, I'm going to assume that the build um, succeeds and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.